Hi, in this video I will explain how we can use redshift and the cosmic scale factor to make calculations about our expanding universe. The Doppler effect is the phenomenon we experience when a car moves past us. As the car approaches, we hear a higher frequency sound than when it is moving away. If we think of it in terms of the wave front, we can imagine the car emitting a wave front, then partially catching up with that wave before it emits the next wave front. The effect is that the wave fronts are closer together than they should be when they reach our ear, so we hear a higher frequency sound. Likewise, when the car is moving away from us, the effect is reversed and we hear a lower frequency sound because the waves are further apart than they should be. The Doppler effect also occurs with light. When a source of light is moving towards us, its light is shifted towards the blue end of the spectrum because it has a higher frequency. And when it is moving away from us, it is shifted towards the red end because it has a lower frequency. This is called redshift. A measurement of this redshift can tell us how fast a galaxy is receding away from us. If you have previously studied the Doppler effect, you'll be aware that for electromagnetic radiation, as long as C, the speed of light, is much, much greater than V, the recessional speed of the, of the moving galaxy, the redshift can be approximated with Z, the redshift, is equal to delta lambda divided by lambda zero, which is approximately equal to V divided by C, where delta lambda is the change in the wavelength of the observed light, and lambda zero is the wavelength of emitted light, and V is the relative velocity of the light source, and of course C is the speed of light in a vacuum. For example, the absorption line in a line spectra corresponding to helium has a wavelength of 468.6 nanometers. But this is observed at 499.3 nanometers. What is the recessional speed of this star. So we can calculate z equals the change in wavelength divided by the original wavelength, which is going to be 499.3 minus 468.6 divided by 468.6. And that gives us a redshift of 6.55 times 10 to the negative 2. Notice there is no unit for redshift, it is a ratio. So to determine V, that is the recessional velocity, we multiply the redshift, 6.55 times 10 to the minus 2, by the speed of light in a vacuum, 3 times 10 to the 8, and that gives us a recessional speed of 1.97 times 10 to the power of 7 meters per second. As I mentioned, that equation only works if the recessional velocity is much smaller than the speed of light. What do we do if the recessional velocity is close to or even higher than the speed of light? Firstly, you may be thinking that it would be impossible for V to reach or exceed C, because of course nothing can travel faster than the speed of light. The key thing to remember here is that distant galaxies are not moving away from us through space faster than the speed of light, but that the total space between us and that galaxy is expanding by more than 300 million meters every second, so this is allowed. So how do we deal with situations like this, where we can't calculate V because it isn't much lower than C, and we can't use that equation, we have to instead apply a concept called the cosmic scale factor. The cosmic scale factor, symbol R, can be quite a confusing concept, but it is a measure of how much the universe has expanded since a given time. R itself is not much use to us, rather what we are interested in is R divided by R zero. If we consider r to be the current scale factor of the universe, and r0 to be the historic scale factor that we're comparing to, 
We don't care about the actual values of R and R0. We only care about what their ratio is. Because this ratio tells us how many times bigger the universe is compared to the historic time that we're interested in. For example, if the ratio R to R0 equals 5, what this means is that the universe is 5 times bigger than it was at the comparison time. So how does the scale factor relate to redshift? Well, they're related by the equation z equals r divided by r0 minus 1. So in that previous example where r divided by r0 equals 5, that would give us a redshift of 4. Let's return to the same problem we worked on earlier, where a 468.6 nanometer wavelength was redshifted to 499.3 nanometers. We calculated that that had a redshift z of 6.55 times 10 to the negative 2. Therefore, we can calculate the cosmic scale factor ratio, r divided by r0, to be equal to z plus 1. So that's 6.55 times 10 to the negative 2 plus 1, which gives us 1.0655. So what does this mean? Well, this means that the universe is 1.0655 times bigger now than it was when the light was emitted from that star. So in summary, we can compare wavelengths of emitted and received radiation to determine the redshift Z. If V is much, much less than C, we can use this redshift to determine the velocity at which the light source is receding from us. And we can also use Z to determine the cosmic scale factor ratio, R divided by R0, and this tells us how many times larger the universe is now compared to when that light was emitted. As the universe is expanding, we should expect that the cosmic scale factor is increasing over time. And with gravity acting on all bodies, we should expect that this rate of expansion would, would gradually slow down. The, the universe would eventually come to a halt. However, the evidence suggests the opposite is happening. The universe's expansion is actually accelerating. The cosmic scale factor is accelerating. In my stellar evolution video, we met supernovae that take place when a red supergiant star collapses. This type of supernova is properly known as a type 2 supernova. There is, however, another type of supernova which we need to know about. This is a type 1a supernova. This occurs when a red giant star and a white dwarf star are together in a binary system. Over time, the white dwarf will gravitationally steal matter from the red giant, resulting in its mass increasing. Eventually the mass will surpass the Chandrasekhar limit and the electron degeneracy pressure will no longer be enough to resist the star's collapse, so this causes a supernova. A type 1a supernova is very interesting to us because their luminosity is highly predictable. They are what we call standard candles. By comparing this known luminosity to their apparent brightness, their distance can be determined up to about 1 billion parsecs, 1,000 megaparsecs away. It's through the observation of type 1 supernovae that we can compare distance and redshift with enough precision to see that the universe's expansion is accelerating. The mechanism for how this works is not fully understood, so we describe this unidentified source of energy as dark energy. Thank you for watching this video from Cowan Physics. If you found it useful, please like, subscribe, and visit cowanphysics.com.